Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are here with another episode of Poll on the Call. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And this is episode 14. We are back from our break, and we are so excited today to interview the amazing Kelly. (laughs) Welcome, Kelly. So excited to finally interview you. (laughs) And Kelly is one of the instructors at our studio, Pole on the Wall. And Kelly has been dancing. I mean, Kelly and I have been dancing together for like maybe like six years, Hmm? quite a long time. (laughs) And um, so very excited to hear about Kelly's story and how she ended up with pole and all sorts of different background dancing that she has um, experience with as well. (laughs) So let's start with, um, let's start with your background. So tell us a little bit about your dance and movement background um, prior to pole. Okay. Um, little kid took, you know, some dance classes in the church basement kind of thing. Um, and then didn't start ballet until I was 12 or 13. So kind of late. Um, and I, I hated it actually, because everybody in the class knew what they were doing and I had no idea. And I ended up dropping out and then, not too long after a friend of mine told me that they had started a um, beginner team class that he was already enrolled in. And he said, it's great. Like, you know, they, they start where you are. And so I started taking it and yeah, it was great. I loved it and became really serious about ballet to the point that that was all I ever wanted to do in life was just go to ballet. That was my happy place. Um, And then I ended up teaching ballet from about I'd say age 20 to, well, I, I can't even put an end date on it because I never know. Sometimes I stop teaching ballet and then something changes in life and I go back to teaching ballet. So you never know. Um, I started pole in 2016. Um, I had just gotten to like point in my life, I guess, where um, my kids were a little older. I could like do something for myself. And I decided actually to start taking ballet classes. And um, I took a few and I just didn't feel the joy that I I used to feel from it. I felt like um, my brain was a little on autopilot with it and my body couldn't do all the things I used to be able to do. It was really frustrating. And then uh, I don't know, I just remembered somebody had mentioned to me a full studio had opened up in my area a few years before and it was something I just kind of tucked away for a while you know so when the ballet thing wasn't working out I thought I'm gonna give this a try and I went and my teacher was Paulina our, our Paulina and um I can't even really remember that first class but I just I know I loved it because here I am still doing it it's been five years so OMG, I love that. I know Paulina, she's no joke. I definitely understand that. <laughs> the only thing I remember from that class is me being in a straddle and her sitting on my back. <laughs> I'm sure we did other things too, but I remember that part. <laughs> That's wow. Love it. So yeah, and then you, you fell in love with Paul and then tell us where it went from there. Yeah. Well, I should start off by talking about how horrible I was at it. Um, (laughs) I thought, I guess because of my ballet background, I was like, this is going to be a nice, easy transition. I'm going to apply the things I've been doing. And it didn't work out like that. I just, um, I had no upper body strength, but also just the coordination was really hard for me. Um, I don't know, maybe because at at the ballet bar, you've got your, your standing leg, your working leg. And that makes sense to me. But the whole idea of like, Inside arm, outside arm didn't make sense for me in full. And then you add when you're doing stuff upside down and it's like the teacher saying, reach your hand high. And I'm like, I don't know where high is anymore. Like, is it still up there? Is it down there? And it just took me a really long time. But like everybody I started to notice once you get certain basic things, everything else adds up, adds on to that, right? So it's like, once you understand the, the idea of like, hooking your inside knee, all of the moves after that, that involve 
hooking in inside me feel a little bit easier to learn. And I think um, also I, I wanted to mention, because a lot of us were ballet dancers and it, um, it was hard for us to understand the internal rotation of the leg from the hip because we're so used to uh, the external rotation in <laughs> yeah, ballet. Like, and ballet, that's almost like a bad word. Like, yeah. turn it, no. <laughs> um, and it's actually like, I feel like in ballet, the only time you turn in was to practice your turnout. You know, you, you turn in for a second so then you can rotate out. Whereas in the pool, it's really functional. You need to have that strength and that turned in position to be able to support yourself. And yeah, that that's completely new for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely understand that pain. <laughs> but do you see, um, do you notice any like, similarities between ballet and pole that you wanted to know about or I, I think just having body awareness and I don't know that that's specifically ballet I often ask um, students like what your background is and if, if they say Pilates or martial arts like that contributes to I think anybody that just has experience with using their bodies they they get it um so just things like, I mean, even just simple things like knowing to point your feet, which is, it's beautiful, but it's also very functional. You know, I mean, when you're hanging by a knee, if you have looseness in that foot, you don't have all the support that you need. And I feel like that um, most of the time comes naturally to me to just point the foot. You know, so there, there are some things that, that carry over and yeah, I just think doing anything in the past helps. Yes, your feet are always pointed. It definitely shows that you're a ballet background, like <laughs> Larry said. <laughs> so should I ask the next question? Yeah. <laughs> so um, are there any memorable um, competitions or performances that you've been a part of um, pole related or I guess even ballet related to or even pole ballet related oh my gosh there's so, that's a lot of questions in one question um so I'll start with <laughs> just like pole competitions we'll go with. um I've only competed once it was pretty horrible but so glad I did it um, it, was, it was not horrible you were it was horrible. <laughs> no 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 <laughs> all right I'm gonna I'll do the horrible parts real quick and then I'll go over to all the great things about it okay. the horrible part was I was so nervous I had a migraine the whole weekend um my choreography wasn't even completely done because at that point I had no idea how to choreograph on pole so like a week before the the competition I told my teacher, I'm like, I really don't know what I'm doing. And she said, well, let me see what you have. And I showed her. She's like, okay, so basically you're just standing next to the pole. So we have to like fix things up. So she helped me. We only had an hour, you know, to, to make things better. So I just went feeling not really prepared. And I was in, I don't know what they call it, beginner or novice or, you know, some basic group. And there are only five of us and I got fifth place. <laughs> so I, I remember like the first person got first place and then second and third. And I kind of figured they would just, you know, just name those positions. And then the other person and I could both believe we got fourth place, but no, they told us she got fourth <laughs> and I got fifth place. Um, all right. That's the bad stuff. The good stuff is meeting other people in the pole community who are not in my actual community, just, you know, people coming from all over and everybody was really wonderful. And I really enjoyed just chatting with people backstage. Um, somebody who was from my studio went, so we had a lot of fun hanging out together. Watching the professionals was amazing. It's not like watching videos, like when there's sweats coming on you, like it's just, it's amazing. And so that was just really great for me to see. And then just like say I did that, you know, I, I took the risk and I went out there and I did it. That feels cool. And I feel like, you know, if other people wanted to compete, I could give them some information like, here's what to know. Here's kind of what to expect about it. All in all, glad I did it. Yeah. And let's be proud. We are 
um, there's many of us in the club of the last place winners. Mm. <laughs> Especially first time experience, it's oh, so hard and such a humbling experience. <laughs> yeah, and just just getting up to to be on the competition stage is enough. Like, and then you know, getting through your your routine is enough too. <laughs> yeah, some people yeah. don't even make it. Don't even make it there. So, <laughs> well, let's go back to. Um, so we've got uh, ballet, and we have pole. <laughs> I'm trying to find Does my she have a favorite performance that she's done ever, like anything. Oh, okay. yeah, back. so yeah, so um, for ballet, I loved performing. Um, like, I really hated ballet class to be honest, but I loved rehearsals and I loved performance. It's maybe rehearsals the best because it's like a performance without the pressure, right? But, um I went to a ballet school where we got to perform um, well-known traditional ballets, which was great. So I got to be in um, Swan Lake and Nutcracker, um, Les Sylphides, Coppelia, like really fun things. And it, it was wonderful to feel like almost like an adult ballet dancer, but you know, I still in high school. And so it was, that was a great experience. And um like Nutcracker, we did two weekends and there were eight shows a weekend. So it was really intense, but it was wonderful too. Like you just like live for that time. You're exhausted, but you've got all the adrenaline going and it's just really great. Um, trying to remember, I think maybe one of my favorite roles that I danced was Paquita, um, which we had done twice. And the first time I was in the core and it's just such a beautiful ballet. I love being in the core, but um, the second time we did it, I got cast in a role that I didn't think they would ever put me in sort of adagio, and that's not my strength. And so I went to the rehearsal kind of thinking I was going to do one of the Allegros, and, and they were like, no, you're doing this one. I just like, leave it. I loved it. It was great. That's amazing. So, so for those of us who don't know what adagio and Allegro is, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> adagio is slow, sustained movements, like extensions. Allegro is really quick. And I think a lot of people maybe don't even know that about ballet is that there are a lot of ballet movements that are really quick. Um, a lot of just jumping. And that's, that's what I had always excelled at. Adagio has always been kind of challenging for me. Love it. And you can learn about all of the things in ballet in your pole ballet class that's right <laughs> <laughs> which is not offered wanna... online yeah no it's offered online and it's um saturday mornings at this time um uh but do you want to tell us a little bit about the class yeah sure um it changes a little bit from week to week because <clears throat> i try to make it work for whoever's going to be there so sometimes I have a group of people who all have a lot of full and a lot of ballet and that's going to be different than if I have bowlers who are just trying the ballet or vice versa. But either way, we do a half hour ballet bar, except instead of using a bar, we're using a pole. And I try to incorporate some pole type um, movement. So in ballet, if you had your left hand at the bar, turn around and put your right hand on the bar. But for pole, we can do things like a dip turn to get to the other side or a chair spin or something like that, um, which also gets the pole worked up. And then I choreograph um, a piece, which we work on for the remaining half hour. And we work on that for about four weeks. I'd love to say we do it by the month, but honestly, sometimes we, we run over or, you know, a long month, we might only do four of the weeks and then and start something new and um I really try to get some variety um so that we have something different like at January I did a piece that I felt was kind of sad and remorseful and then in February we did something much more lighthearted and fun and now we're working on um something based on Swan Lake so I'm trying to give all different types of ballet in that um yeah, did I say everything about that? Is, am I missing anything? Mandy used to <laughs> ballet, so I'm like, I model it after Mandy. 
<laughs> right. Like I, I love how like it's evolved too, because um, my, my warm ups were much more basic and yours are have really evolved into like using the pole a lot more, which I think is so cool. Um, and, and the, your dances are always so beautiful and they're like, they're always so long too. I'm always so amazed that, that everyone has learned so much in just a short amount of time. Um, yeah. They, yeah. So fast. Like I were, I worry sometimes, do I have enough choreography because I don't choreograph yeah. the whole piece, you know, right away. I go a month and sometimes I'm like, Oh my God, they got that already. Like, and I'm not even ready to move, to move on. Um, you know, and, and just, and then I might have somebody who's never had polar ballet before, and then we can work at a much slower pace. So that's a little hard to predict. And can you tell us also, like, how you choreograph? Um, because <laughs> you're well, in the car, one. right? You said that you choreograph a lot in, in the car. car. <laughs> I do a lot in the car, and I also do a lot with my invisible pole at home. I don't have a pole at home. So, uh, yeah, a lot of times I'm in the living room kind of playing around with ideas. And then um, the hardest thing for me is getting an idea and then trying to find the music to go with it. Like sometimes it works. Sometimes we just hear a song and I'm like, oh, that's going to be my next pole ballet, you know? And then I kind of choreograph to what the song tells me to do. But other times it's coming the other way where I have the choreography in mind and then I have to find the music to match it. But often because I'm choreographing in my polis house or or in the car, I get to the pole studio and I find out like, oh, I had like four things we were going to do in two eights. And now we're here. And it's like, there's really only time to do one or two of those things. And so I have to adapt to choreography sometimes kind of on the spot. Um, I do try to grab moments before and after class where I can, you know, finesse things. So hopefully by the time the students come, I know what I'm doing. I love um, it. I I remember when you told me that I was just so amazed because I was, I never even thought about it. I was like, wow, Kelly doesn't have a pole at home. And yet she always creates these like beautiful lengthy dance pieces with the pole that are intricate. And I'm just so amazed that you're able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but you know, <laughs> something that's different from teaching pole ballet from ballet is that as a ballet teacher, you don't have to do a lot physically. Like you can demonstrate, but you can mostly just use your words, right? But for pole, like I actually have to do the whole warm up, even if they don't need me to, just so then when we get on the pole, I'm ready to, to do that part. Um, and sometimes I find like I have kind of a lower endurance sometimes than other people or stamina. So Sometimes the things I choreograph, I can't do them. Like that happened to me in the February <laughs> choreography where I said to the students, I'm like, that's it for me. Like I can't keep going. And they're like, we can. So that's, I let them keep going without me. I love it. They're like, don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I'm also like that. It's a lot of cardio. That is, it, is. it is and then in february we had to wear masks which makes it so much harder to teach yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure well chris do you have another question um yes i do so um what would you say your because i know you have a lot of ballet um background so how how do you how do you describe your pole training routine, your pole training style? I'm curious to hear it. My style. Um, I do feel like there's a lot of ballet, like in my, um, you know, we all kind of go to these, these favorite things that we like, like when we're freestyling, right? Like we all find ourselves doing the same moves. And I, I find the ones that I do, I don't tend to do things that are more like gymnasticky or sexy like I tend to do things that like pull from LA I guess like um well it comes up all the time like I often do like um laybacks or the one I call birdcage and Mandy calls vomitron <laughs> which I just feel is like I don't know it's conducive from, from ballet like kind of that whole flow and I also find myself like on Instagram tending to follow or and just enjoy the videos more of people that have clearly have a ballet background 
And I can see that in their pole dancing. So that would be sort of your favorite style of pole too, like the pole flow or contemporary. Contemporary, yes, yeah. I love it. So, so flowy. But you've also been in the sexy classes. Yeah, and I love it. She has. <laughs> yeah, and I love it too. I you mean, kill it. <laughs> thank you. I, the thing that's so hard for me about those classes is that I've had knee pain for like 10, 15 years and I just feel like it's getting worse. And so sometimes you're in a sexy class and the teacher's like, okay, so now we will do this deep lunge or squat or whatever. And I'm like, oh God, I'm never getting out of this. <laughs> like, I have to like pull on the pole to get myself out of it. Um, so that's kind of a challenging. Like that almost reminds me back of ballet, like trying to do ground plie is hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't even imagine. My knees are starting to like hurt now from things I've done when I was younger. And I'm like, oh Lord. Uh, it's real it really is bodies i know can't they last (laughs) and we use our legs so much (laughs) right yeah you know i find for me like that was one of the reliefs i found with pole instead of ballet because for me the the knee pain is just weight bearing so if i'm aerial it's fine you know so i guess pole flow works pretty well for me for that um you know, I love and that you say that. Slow, but yeah, yeah <laughs> it just, it, it lets me still move, but not feel like I can't do really like petite allegro, like small jumps anymore. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I'm really glad you said that because I also think that I enjoy pole in that way because I was, was not a ballet dancer. I wanted to be one, couldn't do pirouettes or anything like that. Um, but I can do them on the pole. So it's like, yeah, right? pole gives us away. <laughs> it does. It does. That's why you said that because I love spin pole more than mm-hmm. static. And I was never a turner in ballet. But now I'm like, now I can be a turner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And I was always a base, but now I'm flying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Thanks, pole. <laughs> <laughs> funny (laughs) well let's talk let's talk about kelly your nemesis moves oh okay how many do i get to say (laughs) um hey i felt proud of myself yesterday in chris's class because one of them is shoulder mount and yesterday my feet came off the floor like pretty high and the best mount and the best part about it though was like I didn't really feel the shoulder pain. Like I feel like the shoulder pain has always kept me from being able to shoulder mount. And I'm like finally getting to that point where I can think about the other things and not just, oh my God, this hurts so much. Yeah. Okay, so that's one. Shoulder mounts coming along. Um, I have a funny Cupid story. <laughs> Cupid is I don't think really hard, but for some reason I just can't get it. And I actually when I did that competition um, three or four years ago, like I wanted to put a cupid in and I just couldn't get it. And here I am still like struggling with it and trying to get it. But a couple of weeks ago, I decided to teach it in my level one class because I thought, you know what, just because I can't really get it doesn't mean they won't because I think I know all the mechanics of it. So I'll explain it, you know, and, and one of my students was having the exact same problems. That they thought I had. So as I was trying to explain, and how to fix it. Oh my God, I did it. It was like, it was like I was telling her, but somehow I ended up telling myself. And then I took my hands off. I'm like, I'm doing it. Hasn't happened again since, but I got it the one time. So it counts for something. Maybe you need to just guide yourself through with your words. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can tell you that happens to me too when I teach. Like, I have to say the thing before and then it magically happens or else it doesn't happen. Facts same, but that cupid, <laughs> it's like a hit or miss. I feel <laughs> right, yeah. Right. Like, I can only do cupid in the summer. I think I'm probably the opposite, I'm more likely to hit it in the winter because my foot's not. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, yeah, it's a foot contact. Oh, those um, are your ne- I have one more, ne- one more, and this one might not ever happen, and um. And I just forgot the name of it. So, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I keep thinking kickstand and that's what it's 
<laughs> oh, is it foot mount? No. No. Oh, you kill foot mounts, actually. I like foot mount. Um, yeah. Okay, so what do you call your, like, in split grip, and then you pull yourself, you're, like, trying to go into Aisha. The uh, inverted D? No, before that, like. Pants. Uh, handspring. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was one that I can't even, um, I can't even really imagine what it feels like in my body yet. Like, I feel like with those other two, the, the shoulder mount and the cupid, like, I know what, I, what I'm going for. So I might not be able to get there yet. But the handspring, yeah, no, I can't even get my, my muscles to get on board with it. So, I don't know. That one might never happen. <laughs> we'll <see. laughs> I have confidence that your body will figure it out, but I feel like that move is like elusive for a lot of people. It really yeah. is. I, I learned like, thanks to like Fran, like if we really train those specific parts, even when stretching, it helps. So now like I isolate my shoulder routines and my handsprings aren't where I want them, but they have improved. I can't wait to see your progress once you get it. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> well, what, what are your favorite tricks? Oh, okay. Um, I love like a lot of the basics, really. Like I love um, Gemini and Scorpio. I think they're just beautiful positions. And then, you know, things that you can do from those positions. I love those. Um, uh, butterfly, little combinations that I remember Marina like, teaching me, like um, to go from a Gemini to a butterfly to a Scorpio. And I just think that's just in itself like a great little package I just love. Um, see, what else? I've been kind of enjoying Gemini climbs. Um, I have one that I'm going to put in the category of favorite and nemesis, <laughs> which Chris has been helping me on this broken doll because I'm gonna get it I feel like I'm like yes, you are you're so damn close yeah I'm close and I think it's just beautiful like I, I've been watching a video of a dancer doing it I just watch it all day it's so beautiful I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep getting that one I could definitely see you in that one that one's gonna be amazing I know <laughs> me too and she's so damn close I can't wait I can't wait right <laughs> <laughs> love it Oh, Chris, do you have another question? Uh, yeah. Um, how do you normally, I guess, train? I know you teach pole ballet and you have that training style, but you also teach level one and two. So how do you train to improve your pole and any tips that you, any training tips that you might have from your training? Yeah, I don't know as much as I want. I mean, I take a lot of classes, like, I don't, I don't know all of our teachers do that, but I'm not very self-disciplined. So a lot of the teachers at our studio will reserve the space and they go in and they work on things. And I tend to go in with that plan. And then instead I sit on the floor and watch videos and, you know, anything else except the actual training. Um, and this actually happened to me just yesterday. I went in a little bit early and I was like, I'm gonna work on all these things. And then I didn't. And then um, <laughs> it's time to start Chris's class. And I was actually feeling kind of bad about myself and depressed and like, I just want to go home and not take this class. And then um, the class was great. And I was so glad that I, you know, stayed and I felt better. Um, but I, I don't know, like I've been actually thinking about getting a pole for my house. And then I start questioning, like, will I use it though? Like if I, I don't know if I have discipline I kind of need somebody like standing there yelling at me I think but we'll see I might I, I kind of like to have just to be listening but I, <laughs> that's something I need and um work on that second side a little bit a little bit more you could take the online classes from from yeah. home with your home pole that's right right I'm like you though, that, Kelly, I have to be like forced to like do yeah. the things. Or like force myself. So like now where I have it, it's like in the middle of everything. Yeah. So I have to walk from the kitchen to oh. like the hanging out room. <laughs> so now I could just go on a quick little spin. Nothing serious. <laughs> I, have up. I have no, I have no excuse not to know it's there and to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Like last night I went in and I was like, I'm going to choreograph a new thing. But then I ended up just dancing for like hours for, mm. for no reason. But sometimes that's necessary too. <laughs> I tend to go the other way where I go in thinking like, I'm going to work on this move. And then instead I'm like, put on music and I choreograph something instead. <laughs> So but that's okay. I'm still getting something done, right? Yeah, yeah. I think as long as we're listening to our body, because like if we fight with our bodies, we're not going to get anywhere anyway. So just going in and being like, here I am with this pole. We might just sit against it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Do you do any so or other sort of like uh, exercise, like Pilates or anything like that, or yoga? Oh, no, I used. I used to do Pilates a lot and I loved it. Um, I don't even know where to find Pilates now. Um, and I, I've always hated yoga, but I don't know, in my older age, like all of a sudden I'm really enjoying it. Um, there's a person, I, I'm a teacher and there's a person in my school building who teaches it for free once a week online. So I've been taking that. Um, and maybe I think Andy's flex class had some yoga stuff in it, which I do that sometimes. Um, and then I go to the gym, which honestly I kind of hate, but I feel like it's down the street for me. Might as well do it sometimes <laughs> instead of just watching TV in my spare time. So I do a little of that. I guess I remember like, oh, be like Kelly classes canceled. Kelly says, I guess I'll go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my fallback. <laughs> Love it. That's good. All sorts of different things. We, as pole dancers, we need to stay well-rounded in our exercise. So we yeah. stay balanced and everything. Right. <laughs> but yeah, right. right. Like where is Pilates? We were talking about this other, the other day. Um, I feel like Pilates is really good for dancer bodies because it helps to like lengthen and elongate. But, um, you know, as far as like Pilates instruction, I don't know where to. Maybe we could start a pole Pilates. I would look at certification. <gasps> <laughs> that would be amazing that would be so amazing because they have like the reformer like we could just sub in with the pole and figure it out <laughs> yes body's oh, back I, yeah i can like imagine it those deadlift those deadlift kicks those that de what is paulina call them those deadlift leg kicks and yes like <laughs> yeah yeah that would be part of it for sure yeah those kicks OMG sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> more, more things to the list. Facts. <laughs> well, Kelly, what kind of um, pole grip do you use? Um, I use mostly dry hands. I've also used, um, what is it called? Is it called girly grip or girly, girly something? I don't know, which I find pretty comfortable. Um, and then in the summer, I have that really sticky spray. I forget the name of it, um, but that helps for sweating in the summertime, like for knees mostly, backs of knees, a little bit um, on my ankles. But um, you know, and I actually I'm trying to pull back a little bit. Like I'm feeling like I can rely on my grip a little bit more than I used to. Yes. Also, yeah. more um, like I never put it on right in the beginning of class because. It <laughs> on stat on static like I want to have a little sweat going going on so I'm not getting stuck on the floor. <laughs> right we're like we test the waters we're like yeah, is, we gonna yeah. be, do, is this gonna be a gripless day <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a gripless day but I'm getting closer. <laughs> I'm glad you um, you mentioned that you're like grip is getting better because I noticed mine is too it's interesting I never noticed that would happen like before right? so it's that you're going through the same thing yeah like there, there's a point where like you are like now I see it like in beginners too they're like really afraid to like let go but now I'm just like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I used to be afraid to let go like it would be like I didn't trust anything was going to happen like I would just be like <laughs> I guess it happens, but I also feel like our bodies are pretty good at not letting us fall down. So if you take your hands off the pole, then your leg is like, well, I guess I should hold on tighter because we don't want the body falling on the floor. Like, thank, thank you, training. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Chris, do you have a, another question? 
Um, what are your uh, plans for, I mean, what are your poll plans for the future? Where do you see yourself in five or 10 years with poll? No, oh, I actually, so I started polling when I was 43 and kind of thought, well, I'll do this for a few years. I'm not going to be like polling in my 50s for any reason. And here I am at 49 and I'm like, I have no plans of stopping. So um, we actually, we have a student at our studio who started at 50. So I'm going to guess she's like 53, 54. And I remember when she joined, I was kind of like, oh she's super in shape and she's doing this and so once I get up there maybe I'll keep going and now I'm kind of up there so love it yeah I know we're not we're not getting any younger yeah but but I feel um, still here (laughs) still here and I feel I feel good with that just because I have I don't know if the word is confidence I'll say more comfort in my life as I get older and it's it's allows me things just that I want to do and maybe be okay with being bad at things um like a friend of mine brought her daughter who's 18 to her first school class and I asked her if she liked it and she goes no she hated it because she wanted to be great at it and she wasn't great at it and I was like that's a great thing about being older it's like you're just kind of okay with not being great at things as long as you're enjoying it it's fun Yes, and that, that'll be good for anyone to hear. Like if you are, you know, afraid to come to pole class and because you want to be good at it, get rid of that. Just yeah, come to pole class. <laughs> yeah, be bad at it. Have a good time. Like it's gonna be awkward and silly, yeah. but but it's so rewarding. It is. <laughs> and there's a lot of us who have started at a later age too. So it's like you don't have to and we um our last interviewee, Terry, um, she didn't start uh, with any sort of movement or dance background until she was like 60. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's not just for the youngins. Oh, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kelly, do you have any advice for, for pollers or for people who, um, maybe wanted to start poll and are having apprehensions? Well, you could ask your friend who already polls because that friend will tell you everything you want to know because those of, those of us who poll cannot stop talking about poll. So if you're interested in, in starting it, just say to your friend at work, like, hey, I heard you poll. Tell me something about it. And you'll get a lot of information. And then just go. Bring a friend if you want just or just go on your own go what's the worst thing that happens you don't like it then you don't go back again you know but yes thank you for sharing that i think it's so funny you say like just ask your poll friends because that is so true like all of us (laughs) like there's not one of us who will not stop talking about poll (laughs) i i don't talk about it at like my my coworkers all think i teach ballet and i just let it be because I feel like if they found out I teach pole, I would like, they would think I were in a cult because I would just like keep talking about it and trying to get them to do it. And I'm like, if they don't approach it, I'm just leaving it alone. (laughs) Although if they asked me, yeah, I would give them all the answers. (laughs) I love it too funny. (laughs) I think that was all of the the questions that I had to ask Kelly. (laughs) Um, I think that's it. Um, I asked, where do you see yourself? And what kind of poll would you like to try that you haven't experimented Mm -hmm. with yet? They have classes that I haven't really had the chance to take. Like I took Chris's um, class once. I would like to do that, you know, just to have it really defined and, and focusing on one thing. I haven't taken the Latin class yet. So of course I would love to take that. Um, I feel like everything else I've really done or tried at least. I guess I would like to take more 
from my like guest artists. Like we just had somebody at the studio and I took that class, but in the past, whenever there were guest artists, I didn't feel like, uh, confident enough or like, you know, I just didn't feel like that was quite my place yet, but now I would like to, um, you know, just see what else is out there. Other people's styles, like what do they have to share? And I know we have somebody else coming soon, right? In May? Yes, yeah, we have Donna Carno coming yeah. in May. And she's right. also teaching um, an online version of one of her workshops too, which we're really excited about. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I'm really hoping I could do the two package, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> oh my gosh, same. I have to wait until everyone else has signed up. Studio owner problem. <laughs> <laughs> you got into the last one? I did, yeah, yeah. And hopefully <laughs> there'll be a spot for me. <laughs> yes. Um, so who are your favorite pole idols? You just I just thought of that while you were talking. <laughs> oh, I don't think I know anybody's real name. I just know like people that I follow. Um, <laughs> um I think probably who I watch most um on Instagram, his name is Lola Bry. So I guess his real name is Brian. Um he's Australian. Um he's a heels dancer, but not like I wouldn't say that he's really or sexy like it definitely has some ballet background and what I like about him the best is transitions which has always been hard for me I'm one of those people that like grabs and re-grabs like three four times um and so I, I like watching his videos and I'm like the hand just goes there and then you know into the into the move um so yeah I like watching him I like watching um who's the one that you recommended Manny it's Phoenix you know who I'm talking about? Uh, Phoenix Kazri. Yeah. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Yeah. And she has. A She's summer. amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Who else? So there's one called um, Cuckoo. She changed her name. I think it's like Cuckoo Velvet. And she's actually a little bit different for me because she's a little bit more dynamic, I guess, a little more gymnastic quality than I. I'm used to, but still like really fluid. Uh, so I really enjoy watching her. And then there's people like that come and go. There's people that I'm like, I watch all of their stuff and then I'm like, okay, I'm done with that. And then I move on to somebody else. Nice. It's nice true. collection. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> there's sometimes like, there's like, I've been watching this one. Um, I think she's Colombian who, She's amazing, but sometimes I kind of feel like, oh, here we are doing another perfect thing. Like, it's almost like too much perfection. Like, I like, want to see somebody struggle just a little bit. <laughs> you're, you're right, though. I have actually stopped following a few pole dancers like that, too, because I'm like, oh, my gosh, are you just, like, weightless? Like, like come yeah. on, there's no gravity in this room ever. <laughs> you're made of helium. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't achieve anything that you're presenting here. So right. <laughs> move along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love it. <laughs> well, I guess, Chris, do you have anything else you would like to, to ask Kelly? <laughs> I think that's all. I think we went through our list and a little bit yes. more. Nice. Yes. And we definitely learned a lot more than than expected of course I knew you had some extra tidbits in your background that yeah. I was missing <laughs> but yeah I guess um do you have any anything you'd like to close with any um thoughts about poll or anything like that before we close I, I am so grateful to find poll and I know if I never found poll I'd still be going around the planet doing my things and everything would be fine but I just can't imagine that I can't imagine a life without poll and I like sometimes I'll feel bad for people who don't poll and like, you're missing this thing they might have something else maybe it's basketball or whatever you know so they're fine and they're happy but I just can't imagine not having poll love it Yes, I, I feel the same. I definitely understand that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, why like, you need home ASAP. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I think you'll you'll be inspired with it at home. You'll just be like, oh, I'm going to do a fan kick. Yeah. 
like yeah I, I feel like it could help with like choreography but just a little bit like I mean I'm not going to get anything tall by any means but mm -hmm. just to do a little yeah for yes. sure and then you can inspire everyone that enters your home yeah. <laughs> I actually I did have a pole in my living room when I first started but not very much space but my teenage daughter would be like my friends are coming over you need to take down your pole so I don't know uh, that is when you say, well, your friends could start paying me rent in that case if you want to take it down. I'll get them classes. <laughs> yes. Hello. All right, Kelly. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to be interviewed for this podcast and for sharing your story. Yeah. Thank you for letting me talk about Paul for almost an hour. That was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you will have a link to Kelly's pole ballet, and she also teaches level one and two. We'll have a link so y'all can sign up for that. If you can make it in studio, amazing. If not, she also does online, which is even awesome even more awesome as well because you don't have to come in or leave your house <laughs> yeah and if you've never done ballet it would be a great introduction to you know ballet and how to incorporate that technique in your pole dance uh, so yeah. i highly recommend that class <laughs> after your first class you will know some ballet terminology and some new ballet moves you probably won't be able to get them right but you'll definitely mm -hmm. know some ballet after you leave for sure <laughs> yes <laughs> and for people like me who wanted to be a ballet dancer, it makes me help to relive, live out my dreams. <laughs> I know it, it, it's a nice trend. It's, it's definitely a nice combo because I always wanted to do the ballet and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to incorporate and it really does help bring it into the pole with the straight legs, pointed toes and things like that. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, right, well, I guess... We will sign off. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Mandy Mack. And I'm Chris Rivers. <laughs> and we are signing off. Signing off. <laughs> Even a foot. Yes. today. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Kelly. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs>